What's up guys? It is Eric from Veris Engineering and it is a beautiful Saturday here in Indianapolis. Got the machine running on some GT3 uprights and we are finally doing another install on our GT350R. Apologize for the slight delay. We've been working on some internal processes to improve our efficiency and keep more products in stock for you guys. But now we are finally getting back to R&D, which is what we really enjoy here. The GT350R is a fantastic car from the factory, but we want to improve it some more. So we are going to throw on one of our UCW rear wings, which bolt on exactly like factory. Really excited to offer this and excited to see what it does on track. So um, we're basically going to do install like always. So we'll go over what's included in the kit. We'll go over the tools required for to install the kit. And then um, we'll actually do the install. But overall, I'd probably budget an hour and a half, two hours. Not a difficult install. No drilling because it already comes with factory wings. So makes it a lot easier on us. So let's get to it. All right, tools required for this install. We got a bubble level, two and a half millimeter Allen wrench, three millimeter Allen wrench, four millimeter Allen wrench, five millimeter Allen wrench, 10 millimeter socket, ratchet, and a T30 Torx. That is all you need for this entire install. All right, guys, so I have most of the parts laid out. Um, we don't have the end plates showing. They're not here. Or the hardware kit, which has a bunch of uh, M6 hardware. But, and we also have the double-sided tape already installed on the trunk mounts. I've already started a little bit, got a little antsy. But overall, this is the majority of the kit. So we have two trunk mounts, two uprights, and then we have our UCW rear wing blade. And um, the rest of the kit is end plates and hardware, like I said. All right, guys, so I have popped the trunk, really easy there. Um, we are going to remove these two bolts. They are Torx. I need to go measure the size real quick and then I will let you know. And then we have to remove this rubber plug, which then has a 10 millimeter nut and a odd spacer in it. Um, that's all I can explain it to until I take it out. But basically we're gonna remove that nut and then do that on the other side and then pull off the factory rear wing. All right guys, so this, these uh, two Torx bolts or Torx head bolts are T30. All right guys, so we've unbolted the four Torx, two on each side and the two nuts. Um, I then like kind of put the trunk down, slapped the, the spacers out. Um, now it's time to remove the factory wing. The factory wing is double-sided taped on to the trunk, so it's going to be a lot more difficult than what you see me do because I've already had this off. Um, my recommendation is to push as straight up as you can because you can potentially dent the trunk if you like pull it at an angle. So I kind of go like this and then it'll come off. Um, again, yours might be even more difficult and then the factory wing comes off. All right guys, so now it is time to assemble the trunk mounts. Um, the first thing that I did was I installed the double-sided tape. And to do that, I take off the white side of the double-sided tape. Um, and then I, I carefully drape it on. I basically hold it like this and then slowly like propagate, um, actually adhering it. You can use a 50-50 mix of isopropyl alcohol and water to increase adhesion. Um, I'm not extremely concerned with adhesion, more for the weather tight seal. Um, so I didn't do it, but you can if you'd want to. Now, if you look in the hardware kit, you will have a 40 millimeter long stud, M6 stud. Um, and whoops, it has a hex on one side. We will thread that into the center bolt location and then use a three millimeter Allen wrench to tighten that. And then uh, just go basically till it's bottomed out like so. And um, now we're basically ready to install the trunk mount onto the trunk itself. All right, so to install the trunk mount, I'm going to remove the double sided tape. Uh, well, the, the red backing, I guess. Um, that's going to be step one, which of course is fighting me. All right. And then obviously with the stud in place, we'll be able to use that to guide this, um, the center hole, but to guide the entire unit, I'm going to temporarily install a button head before the double-sided tape 
lays down. So I will have two points to actually get the best chance of actually getting the, uh, the trunk mount to fit in the correct location because it is very much contoured to the trunk. So now that I have the stud in and the bolt, I'm going to press the trunk mount into the trunk. And that's basically as easy as it is. Now we will reuse the uh, strengthening rib here from the factory. So I am pulling the bolt back out, but um, it's basically adhered because the double sided tape is pretty good stuff. Um, now we'll put the uh, OEM spacer here and then reuse the OEM nut. And then here we're going to use the factory support, which is a uh, black hard plastic. And then we're going to use M6 button head cap screws with a washer. These are 16 millimeter long. Um, tightening torque for the bolts should not be more than six foot pounds. These are M6 fasteners going into aluminum. They do not need to be crazy tight. So six foot pounds max. Um, and then uh, honestly, the same can go for the spacer and the nut. And to do the nut, I, I always recommend uh, placing the nut in the socket and then kind of bringing the trunk down into it. Otherwise, you can lose the nut into the trunk abyss. Um, yeah, so that basically concludes it. Uh, as far as the trunk mount install, now we'll install the uprights onto the trunk mounts. And I will go over that with you guys here shortly. All right, so in the hardware kit, there are four, at least four, we might add one, but they are four um, socket head cap screws. They are 12 millimeters long. We're going to install the upright onto and drop it, of course. Why not? We're gonna install the upright onto the trunk mount. This uses a five millimeter Allen wrench and installs like so. Once again, M6 fastener going into aluminum. I would recommend not going above six foot pounds. You will strip the aluminum if you go much over six foot pounds. So just be careful because um, I already can tell that probably some people are going to go crazy with it and strip the threads. Don't do that. All right, uprights are installed. It's now time to install the rear wing. All right, guys, to install the rear wing, you can do this by yourself. It definitely helps to have a friend, but with the way that everything is designed, the wing actually kind of just sits there on the uprights, and then you can go grab some bolts and actually bolt the wing on at that point. So that is what I am doing. All right, and then we'll do some in the back. We'll go up somewhere around like 10 degrees. I don't know, I think that's 10 degrees. Nope, that's not 10 degrees. I think that's more like seven. Here, we'll go 10 right there. I think that's 10. And we'll get, um, to, to bolt this on, these are M6 button head cap screws. They are 25 millimeters long. I have a washer on the button head cap screw and I'm using a washer on the nut side as well. Um, pretty straightforward stuff there. So bolt, washer, wing mount, upright, washer, nut. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then we'll tighten it down. All right, so the last part of the install is to put the end plates on the wing. Um, we have these really nice little billet uh, aero end plate washers. Um, that goes with a 
O-ring, and then a M4 flathead. Use a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench to tighten those on. Uh, they really do not need to be tight. Um, so keep that in mind because um, they are going into aluminum pieces in the wing. So they will strip as well if you go crazy with them. And then as far as um, orientation, make sure that the slot is on the top half. Um, we've seen other people flip it around. Granted, you can do whatever you want at the end of the day, but the larger area is supposed to be on the bottom side of the wing, not the top side. Um, less area, significantly more area. And then we use a bubble level like so to clock it correctly. Um, so like right there, and then we'll tighten it down. Then that's truly about as tight as I'm gonna go. Um, it seems plenty tight to me, so do whatever you'd like to do though. But if you strip it, it's yours. That concludes the install, um, yeah. All right guys, that concludes the install of our GT350 R UCW rear wing. Uh, overall, the install took us about two hours and I was significantly taking my time running the machine as well as uh, documenting everything that I used for on the install so that it'll help you guys out. And, and the video obviously takes some time there as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really simple install. I, I think it looks awesome. I can't wait to see what it does on the track. Uh, we got to finish up our front splitter and some other pieces that we have developing for the 350R. But um, yeah, I'm going to call it a day. Till next time.